times in life you get asked to pick your dream Fast Five team and you'd think being here at the Netball World Cup you'd be spoilt for choice. Well, you're wrong. We've had to search high and low and the penguins are about to make the cut. We're here in Boulders Bay where you can walk from the boulders to the sand in such a glamorous fashion as me. Think Baywatch, a bit more sun. We've come here to experience life in the raw. We find penguins here, the African penguin, and we find from sweaty feet on the court to happy feet off it. Our very own penguins. I don't know if you want to be called penguins, and I don't know where that was going, but I'm going to keep with it. Pamela Cookie, <laughs> Stacey francis Bayman, Ebony Asara Brandt, and we only went and let an Australian in. Dan Ryan is here. Thank you. That's all we need from you. Goodbye. <laughs> there he goes, off into the sunset, very much like the hopes and dreams of this Australia side. Dan... I've got to start the yeah all right. I've got to start the wind up. Have you been confident with Australia so far? Oh, I think so. I think they're tracking how they'd want to be at this point in time, and they're certainly ready for a test. And I think they're ready to be tested. So we'll see how it goes. You know, this is the ultimate test because the water is freezing every time. About every two seconds, it comes in, makes our feet cold. You're handling it well, Stacey, but we're doing this to intimidate Dan because we know Australia like nothing better than being intimidated. By the time people watch this, they'll have seen England thrash them, what, by 20 or, or 30 goals. Australia, the ones to look for. <laughs> you got to keep going. You're right, yeah. Um, I think Australia are usually the people that you need to watch out for. They're not coming into the competition as world champions, but they will be incredibly confident. They've had an incredible international season and really haven't been too well challenged so far in this World Cup. I was just trying to see how long we could be serious with the netball chat <laughs> before we get to the reason we're truly here for Off The Court. Because we, we pick a theme for each episode of Off The Court Daily. And this theme today obviously is Pamela Cookie, downtime. Mm -hmm. So we're talking on the day that Australia and England have got some downtime. Is this pretty much what you'd go and do? Um, so I was never one for ice baths on the recovery, but <laughs> if you give me this location and this water, I think I might, I might come. But it's been great to see some of the teams they've been chatting about on their rare day off to be able to get out of the convention centre, get out of the hotel and come to places like this in beautiful Cape Town where you can just chill, just regroup. Chill. Chill. Literally <laughs> chill. It's freezing. Um, yeah. And what about the coaches? What do they usually do on the downtime, um, Dan? Well, no rest for the wicked, uh, Ebs. There'd be no resting for the coaches whatsoever. They'd be watching video. Um, they'd be scouting. They'd be preparing. So it's much more easier being an athlete. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, was there a wine tour yesterday? Did we, we didn't get invited on that, did we? That play hard, party hard, go out on the court and, and deliver, though, that's, that's got to be what you're working to, isn't it? Uh, I think when you go to a major competition like this, you've got to enjoy the entire experience. So... When a winery tour is on offer, of course, you take it up and you experience it. Um, when coming to the beach wearing a pair of jeans, it's also a thing that you must do as well. So, um, look, I think everybody in this competition will be exploring Cape Town, enjoying as much as what the city has to offer. It's a great place. And, uh, yeah, how lucky are we to be doing this today? Yeah, well, we will see some penguins hopefully in a minute because that's what we were promised, Ken, behind the camera. Ebony, were you one of those that, that would like to let your hair down? I was actually quite serious, I think. I usually just read a book or Stacey probably vouched me in terms of like, you should find me sleeping somewhere um, and having a good meal. But everyone wants to know why a, a, a nice ex excursion in terms of someone pulling me out by the, my hair, usually, to just enjoy it. But it's just people prefer in different ways. That was usually mine. And look at you, the pro geek, going. And we've got seaweed <laughs> up to our double chins. <laughs> Stacey, like, you've caught up a bit with Sarah and, and the Scotland camp, but, like, it's fleeting. I think she's sharing a room with, with Tamsin Greenway. Like, they're getting no downtime, are they? No, and also you've kind of just highlighted the difference between the teams. I don't think Stacey Marinkovic is sharing a bedroom with her assistant coach, but the financial support that that team has is much bigger and, and it's not at all common across world netball. So, yeah, Tamsin and Sarah are sharing a room. They are very used to that from having come through the system as players. And I think... Um, I've just dropped Sarah in it and say I imagine she wouldn't mind a little bit of space from Tamsin's <laughs> constant <laughs> analytics and the no downtime aspect. Sarah's a very chilled human, but I've also never seen her as stressed as this competition this year. She really is. 
she is. She's taking it seriously. So I think I think that's what Netball Scotland would like to hear. <laughs> well, it's, it's play sings weekend because all the teams when they're out here as well want to finish higher up for the for the world rankings too. So it's not just about those teams that are in the final four. We know Australia are there. We know England's there. By the time that you watch this, we'll know that others are there. This is a really popular beach. So what we're going to do right now, whilst we keep talking, there's loads of people who want to come through. They can come through. Feel free, but you be filmed at the same time. <laughs> are you here for the Netball World Cup? No. I think she Sashi's hasn't uh, got annual leave approved. That looked that very shifty to me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be spotted. Oh, there's some more coming now. Hello? Feel free to come through. Would you like to tell you about Boulders Beach? The African penguins around the corner. They used to be called something else, but they're now called African penguins. You're fine. Uh, they'll still see us while you come through. Feel free to keep coming through. The joy of coming to anywhere new is that you're going to meet people along the way, experience different stuff right tell me about some of those places you've been to oh it definitely it's about the culture the environment where well, we've been into new zealand to australia to jamaica barbados they have the best beaches in the world but it for me oh, 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 oh. <laughs> jamaica do all right they're all right we're normally in kingston though so we don't get to see the beaches but um it's, it's just the fact that you get to mingle and mix with people from all over the world. They, like So many nationalities have come to support their various teams. The Zimbabwe crowd, we saw the Tongan doing their singing and their dancing. Everyone is just bringing that culture, that vibe, that love of netball, but their love of their cultures. And to be able to experience it in all these different countries as a player, you're so privileged. And it means when, because sometimes it is just the sports hall, the hotel and the airport you get to see. But yeah. I know there's places that I want to go back to based on what I've I've been doing on tour. Right, we all know it's going to get a serious bit. So what do we make of the Cape Town experience? South Africa's got it right. Dan? Yeah, I think so. It's very unique in the way it's been done and very different to previous major competitions. And um, I have to say there is nothing quite like sitting in the stands as a spectator when South Africa is playing. The fans and the atmosphere is to the point of unbearable if you're not supporting South Africa. It's, it's just crazy. But, you know, they're cheering every umpire's call, every goal, every catch, every pass. Um, it's just nuts. So from that perspective, it's, um, it, it's groundbreaking, I, I suppose, for netball in this country. It's absolutely amazing. I think we remember our time probably from Netball World Cup in 2019 and to see like the South African community really join together and really celebrate you know, the pro years. But even just playing out there, even if you're not a South African, just the vibe, the vibrant the exuberance and the African culture that's coming through is just a sight to be seen. So it's absolutely phenomenal. I'm sure each and every athlete, coaching official and support staff are really relishing in this moment. Highlights then, Stacey, for you? can be a player, can be a team, can be right now freezing cold with your feet in the sand. <laughs> yeah, you can't get past um, special moments like this. We were obviously privileged to be on court together in lots of different environments and um, we all probably took ourselves quite seriously and I don't know that you took the time sometimes to get out of the hotel to reminisce and we are very much in that phase of our lives right now where everything is about reminiscing. So, retirement. Uh, reminiscing, <laughs> retirement, relaxing, wine tours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, got, I was a victim of that. Um, but yeah, this moment is fantastic. But for me on the court, who I've absolutely loved um, and really want to see them take a step forward post this competition is Zimbabwe. Yeah, agreed. Pam? Oh, so many different things that come up. But it, it, it's, I think for me, those lower nations and uh, uh, Stacey touched on it earlier in terms of that funding. So they don't have as much money as some of the, the top nations, but they're still coming. They're still bringing them all. And they're closing that gap on the world stage. And there's so many different players that like Veve from Tonga, um, Nawanja from um, Uganda. So many different players that we've seen that are just taking that next step up. And I'm loving it. She's loving it. Uh, we're enjoying our time on the beach, but we are yet to see any penguins. And camera ken just have a look at the audience that we've developed <laughs> hello everyone hey. yeah, there they are so responsive uh, great it's been one of those tours already that we've all thoroughly enjoyed but now's the tasty bit we're going to build a sand castle and then put our flags in the top for who we think no we're not <laughs> right you're all going to get it wrong unless you say england who wins it dan you know what i think first i'll say any of the top four can win it but i'm really feeling like this is Jamaica's time. I've really enjoyed their performances so far. They've got a very deep squad with lots of different options that they've been rolling them on throughout the entire competition so far. Um, I almost feel like it's a now or never moment for the Jamaicans and probably the most exciting thing about this team is if you speak to some of those players and I've had a lot of conversations with Janil Fowler, their captain obviously who plays in our club side, um, 
they believe that this is their time and they believe they can win it. And when you have that deep, deep belief, um, you can do amazing things. So you do not want to be facing Jamaica in a semi-final and you want to cross your fingers that you're at the top of your game in a gold medal match if you're, if you're up against them as well. How, how do we beat Janil? Not telling. <laughs> the simple answer is you can't. <laughs> I think you drag her here and put her feet in the sand. Is exactly what you do, Ed. I probably have to agree with Dan. I think Jamaica, for me, have been in such good form. I think even we, there were so many questions about their midcourt. They've obviously got superstar bookends, the likes of Shamira Sterling, the likes of Latanya Wilson. And I think in terms of Adeem Thomas, especially, has come on for me, and Nicole Dixon Rochester has come on and actually performed superbly in, this, in these first and second stage of the competition. So Jamaica will be where I I would place my bet, but I'd also say in terms of England, they haven't dropped a quarter for the whole of the Netball World Cup. And I don't think there was much talk about them at the beginning of the competition. Really, people quite discounted them. But actually, once you're, once you're an underdog, as we saw in 2018, anything can happen. Stacey, it's England, right? It could be England. Thank if you. They that's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> moving on. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, it's so difficult, and um, I'm also very mindful that there are a couple of Australian organisations that pay my wage, so I will probably double down on Australia, knowing um, how hungry they are that nothing but gold is good enough, but whatever team makes it to the final has the absolute chance to win on the day. Jamaica would be nice to upset World Netball. I'm going to say Australia, so I don't upset my bank balance. <laughs> uh, talking about upsetting bank balances, I think we've all got money about our person that's about to get wet, so I'd love your answer. But unless it's England, we're going to find the penguins. Uh, the water has well and truly come in, so we're going to Baywatch run this way. Are we ready? Right. Off we go. I'm pregnant. <laughs> I look pregnant. Oh, no. <laughs> Sky Sports. Feel it all.